Well, first, Hillary Clinton called Trump supporters deplorable. Then WikiLeaks exposed her and her campaign's disdain for Catholics. And now you can add one more group to that growing list. Fox News chief national correspondent Ed Henry has that story. While Hillary Clinton continues to target Donald Trump for dividing the country. I take no satisfaction in seeing what Trump does. The ongoing dump of hacked emails from the account of Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta, now an astonishing total of over 10,000 messages leaked out, show a Democratic Party ripe with division. The Hillary Clinton documents released by WikiLeaks make more clear than ever just how much is at stake. After emails emerged attacking everyone from Catholics to Hispanics, Today, the target was the African-American community, which carried Clinton through the Democratic primaries in the first place. In February 2016, liberal activist Neera Tandon went after former NAACP head Ben Jealous, who had the temerity to back Bernie Sanders. Tandon writing to Podesta, quote, I know there are a million reasons to desperately want Hillary to win, but Ben Jealous feeling that he has no power is a particularly good one. And when Clinton first launched her campaign, Tandon lashed out, writing, quote, I'm not the diversity police, but there is grumbling on the four white boys running next presidential cycle, so I recommend rolling out some people who look like the rest of America soon. Podesta hit back, writing, quote, really? Don't you think I know that? And when pro-Clinton political operative David Brock suggested bringing up Sanders' health records during the primary, the Clinton camp freaked. In emails to Podesta, Tandon hit Brock hard, writing, quote, maybe he actually is a Republican plant. Hard to think of anything more counterproductive than demanding Bernie's medical records. And regarding Clinton's own response to the health record strategy, Tandon lashed out her own candidate, saying, quote, Hillary, God, her instincts are suboptimal. Pretty typical, though. All the Clinton aides would say about WikiLeaks today is that they've taken steps in recent weeks to make their communications more secure. I think it would probably <laughs> undermine our efforts to protect ourselves, people like the Russians, if I talk too much about it, but we have taken additional precautions. They probably wish they had made some of those communications a little secure a little bit earlier, but interesting breaking tonight, there are reports uh, that the U.S., particularly the Central Intelligence Agency, may be preparing a cyber strike in retaliation against Russia. We've heard already the Obama administration believes that Russia is behind these attacks. Uh, as you heard there from Jennifer Paul Mary, they may even, NBC is reporting, go after the private bank accounts of some in the Kremlin leadership to give you an idea of the stakes involved here, Tucker. Yeah, just to kind of prove the point. But, of course, we don't know that Russia is behind them so far as I can tell. Exactly. So what, what is the explanation for these emails? I know that Podesta and Jen Paul Mary had been saying, you know, these are not real. The suggestion being some of them are forgeries. Are they continuing to claim that? No, you know, what's interesting instead is that they have actually not challenged the accuracy of a lot of these emails. They have said that some of them may be hoax, hoaxes, but, but have uh, done two things, I think. Number one, uh, they've decided not to challenge the accuracy because a lot, if not all of them, are true. But secondly, they've made a political decision, which is they don't want to get mired in answering every one of these 10,000 emails that have come out already because it'll take them off message something the Trump campaign hasn't quite learned because they've been hit by all kinds of things, as you can see, and you've been reporting on, and they respond to every single one of them, yeah. and they have had trouble getting their message out. The Clinton campaign, on that point, has been a little more disciplined. Yeah, you'd think reporters might push the issue a little bit, but no. <laughs> Ed Maybe. Henry, ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot. Thanks, buddy. What other email exchange released in that WikiLeaks dump shows that President Obama knew about Hillary Clinton's private email server, and top Clinton aides may have tried to ignore a congressional subpoena. On March 3rd of 2015, the House Benghazi Committee told Hillary Clinton to hand over all her emails. And yet one day later, we now know on March 4th, 2015, Clinton's lawyer, Cheryl Mills, sent this email to her campaign chairman, John Podesta. Quote, think we should hold emails to and from POTUS, that would be the president. That's the heart of his executive privilege. We could get them to ask for that. They may not care, but I think they will. Our nightly political panel is joining us now from the Wall Street Journal, Glenn Hall, and the Washington Post, Philip Bump. It's great to see you both, gentlemen. To you, Mr. Bump. This does kind of answer one question, which was, did the president lie when he said he didn't know Hillary Clinton was using private email? Now it's pretty well confirmed that he received a number of them from her, so isn't that a flat-out lie? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, there are a lot of instances in which President Obama was asked about whether or not he knew uh, right. about Hillary Clinton's email server. I'm not sure what the timeline is. I can't answer that concretely and you know there's there's a lot that goes into it but yes this certainly does show 
that President Obama and Hillary Clinton had communication on this private email server. Um, I think that you know this is something that we've actually seen before. You know, in January, this is something that the State Department actually came out and said there are these emails in this batch which we are withholding because of executive privilege. Um, uh, so we we knew that this was the case. You know, I think that the timing here is obviously also very awkward, having just been asked to produce these uh, and then responding with this this question of do we actually need to turn right. this over? Which, by the as far as I can tell, is legal. By the way, I mean just as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. I think executive privilege is a real thing, right. and that's a real question. I'm not sure that was wrongdoing. But I do think it's meaningful that the president lied about his knowledge of her private email because we now know it's illegal. And I, think the, I think the FBI director made that pretty clear. She shouldn't have been doing this. And it potentially was a risk to national security. So why doesn't someone press the president or his office on this? Like, you, you told us this. turned out to be untrue. Account for yourself. Yeah, I think that is the next step that has to happen, right? We've got the new batch of emails from WikiLeaks. We see this information. Now we need to be following up and discovering just who knew what and when. You know, there are some distinctions between knowing you were getting email from a private email account versus a private server. I don't know what the defenses but may if be. She's, if she's but conducting get official business on a private email account, that's kind of the nub of the question, right? right. And he was asked that, and no, I had no idea. Right. But he did. Yeah, you know. I think he's got some answering to do. Yeah. Mostly right now what he's doing is you know, campaigning on behalf of Clinton. And I think what you also see in these emails was a sympathy from the Obama administration towards helping uh, Hillary Clinton avoid getting mired in this sure. scandal, which hasn't happened, but they tried. But to, but to answer questions, you have to be asked them. And I guess this goes to a larger question. Why is this so profoundly uninteresting to America's press corps? I mean, I've spent the last five days reading these emails, and you know, you could say maybe they shouldn't have been leaked and feel bad for Podesta, as I do actually, that this private email is leaked. But there's no denying that they're chock full of relevant, interesting information, and I just don't see it on the front page of any newspaper that I read, including, no offense, yours. Why is that? Well, I mean, I think that there are so many things to ask the president, right? I totally get your point. I 100% I, I understand your point. I think that any journalist who is worth his salt, if they had a chance to sit down with President Obama, has a long list of things that they would like to ask. Well, now, but president I don't know. He is a spokesman, too, though. You don't actually no, need understand. a private audience with the president in order to pose these questions. You said to the White House press secretary, sure. like, what about, you know, huh? Right. Yes. All, I mean, the, the point I was going to make is that you also have a limited availability. You have a limited amount of time, and there's a lot going in the world. I honestly don't think that on the scale of things that are going on in the world, and even Email Cheryl Millson to John Podesta in 2015 rises to the level of something that I would bump to the top of my list. But again, this is something that's subjective. But I'm seeing, you know, nine stories about Trump and sure. you know his behavior, and uh, which I think are relevant, by the way, and I, and I think they should be covered. I, I would say this: I think we'd be seeing a lot more coverage of these emails if Trump wasn't stepping into these uh, issues that true. that have distracted I know, America's but hold attention. Wait, come on, I mean, like, look. There, you know, a big news organization has enough resources to cover both, you know, Trump's indiscretions and like the other side. And by the way, do you know a single person in any newsroom in America who doesn't think Hillary's going to be president? Everyone does. So shouldn't they be covering her more assertively? Because she might be the president, no? Right. But if I could just defend a little bit here, right? <laughs> Go we ahead. A front page story this week about Obama and the indiscretions in his office that also uh, attacked uh, Hillary Clinton. Yes. Uh, the story didn't attack Hillary Clinton, but the, the people we were talking to. It's a good piece, I read it. Yeah. It's a front page piece. We've spent countless hours reading through 50,000 pages of email. We've had story on it every single day. So it's not like we're ignoring it, but it seems like the public is giving a lot more attention to the coverage of Trump's issues, which are much more salacious, perhaps. Okay. Okay. We That's have correct. a segment coming up, but I don't think you guys are in, but we actually kind of break down the numbers, speaking of the public. How many minutes have they been presented on each story relatively on the nightly news? We're going to have that coming up. It's, it's unbelievable. Thank you, gentlemen. I think you're coming back. I hope.